So the one time that I actually try and get out of the studio to record some A-roll turns out to be nearly 100 degrees even when the sun is setting and going down. But nonetheless, here we are and I want to talk about the awesome new Irix 15mm Cine Lens. Let's do it. Now right now I do have the Irix lens on my Pocket 6K uh, and I actually am using the Dream Filter. You can see over here on these street lamps a little nice extra highlight bloom just gives it a little um, more of an effect. My skin is a little softer, it's probably also very sweaty so there's that. Now a couple weeks ago I talked about the Irix 45mm which quickly became my favorite uh, lens that I've pretty much ever used for around the thousand dollar price point and Irix really liked that video so here we are reviewing the 15mm which actually just came out a week before I bought the 45 so uh, it's awesome. Now I'm not going to be comparing it alongside with the 45 because uh, next I'm actually going to be picking up the 150 macro do a video on that and then once I have the almost complete set of three cine lenses there I'm going to do a whole video on how they all color match and how well they work together shooting the same kind of projects at different focal lengths so make sure you get subscribed to see that. Now the nice thing is all of these lenses come at the same exact price point. So whether you want the 15, the 45, the 150, unless there's any sort of deals or specials, they're all around that $1,000, $1,100 price point, which is awesome. And this shares a lot of the same specs. We have full frame coverage, 8K sharpness resolution. Of course, it's 15 millimeter with ultra low focus breathing as well as ultra low distortion you can see some of the samples of architecture that there is very very minimal uh, you know fisheye effect and it's keeping all the lines very straight now this shot of a fence at a very low angle it actually has more of a distortion but as soon as you bring it up to eye level uh, it kind of self corrects that so if you're shooting a scene where you're noticing more of a curvature and distortion, uh, DaVinci Resolve's lens uh, fixing is incredible. By the way, if you hear like booming sounds in the background, it's not like gunshots or anything. I'm filming this on 4th of July. Another exterior mistake. Yeah, this audio is gonna be super fun. But anyway, back to the specs. This shares pretty much the same ideal weight and size of the 45 and the 150. They did this so that way, if you put this thing on a gimbal, which it does beautifully, this balance is great. I put it on my gimbal, my Fiutech with my, um, uh, pocket 4k hopped on an electric skateboard and it was good to go got a ton of awesome really smooth shots of course the wider you go the better um, and less kind of vibrations and the less movement you're going to pick up one thing that i'm like super impressed with is the very close minimum focus distance i don't know what the exact spec is i'll put it right here it's probably around a foot or 11 inches or so how close you can get to your actual subject and that's really awesome on a wide angle because then you get that really cool effect where it's a close-up but you're still seeing a lot of the world now it also shares the exact same 86 millimeter filter thread and 95 millimeter front um, element thing so that way the same exact clamp on matte boxes fit and I use the same tilt adapter so that way I can quickly switch out the matte box between this and the 45 without wasting any time. Now someone commented on the previous video asking about what sort of mounts this has. Uh, pretty much has everything but I don't want to miss that. It's pretty much got everything. You got Canon, EF, Sony E, Olympus, Panasonic, Micro Four Thirds, and even REPL mount for those ultra professionals out there continuing on with the build quality it's got that same all metal design the focus gears and aperture rings are in the exact same position on all uh, cine lenses in their lines so that way you never have to change where the follow focus is set up on like the 15 millimeter rail the nucleus nano like I have on here as soon as I switch out the lenses uh, and put a new one on it's in the exact same position no matter which lens you have. Now I spoke about how the weight is pretty much the same on all of the different lenses. This one comes in around 2.4 pounds, so it's certainly not a light lens. Um, I actually did attempt vlogging with it, and here's how that went. Hey, so I'm trying this uh, vlog thing out. Um, but yeah, this is my Pocket 4K with the 
a Comlight Ultra whatever speed booster with the 15 millimeter Hyrix lens. It's about a foot away from my face, maybe a foot and a half or so. Um, and this is really, I've never had such a wide angle thing. Obviously it's a cine lens. So one, there's no autofocus. Um, so that makes things a bit rough. And two, it is about two and a half pounds and I keep having to switch my hands and I can see how shaky I am. I don't know how it's gonna translate to the actual footage. But there's no way that you could like walk down the street and like have a conversation with someone for like 10 minutes while holding this up. So the other issue right now is I do have it on a Gorilla Pod. I have like the medium one where it's not a dinky little one. Used to held up DSLRs and regular lenses just fine, but this one, it will not stand all the way on its own. It's currently, all the feet are fully flat and spread out. So um, not the best setup for a Gorilla Pod. With all this being said though, I mean, again, you get a very nice wide field of view. And for someone like me who isn't a vlogger and doing this every day, if I was on a set or uh, somewhere like this where I literally just wanted to have a vlog type, type segment for, you know, a minute or two, then I think this setup's great. You know, I got my Atomos Ninja right on top, uh, internal battery recording to the internal SD card. So, you know, it's stripped down. There's no cage on it or anything. But yeah, obviously I'll see in the edit if the footage is like just too shaky and too bad. This is just the internal mic of the Pocket 4K, by the way. Um, since again, I'm keeping it as light as possible. Wasn't really anywhere easy to rig up a um, my Rode Micro or whatever it's called. So yeah, this is the internal mics. All right, this thing's heavy. Back to the main video. Whoa! <laughs> that didn't work at all because like as soon as I got close to the lens, I like stopped and slowed down because I don't want to smack this lens or touch the front lens element. <laughs> all right, back to the video. I don't vlog. So yeah, I think you definitely could vlog with this if you have some decent muscles and you don't mind manual focus. It's definitely got that really nice wide perspective. Now that was on my Pocket 4K with the Ultra Speed Boosters. So it was actually a little bit larger of a field of view than the Super 35 on my Pocket 6K. Now in terms of the actual sharpness of the lens, right now I'm shooting at about uh, T3. It goes down to 2.6, so it's not as wide open as the 45, which was T15. But as you can see, it is near pitch black. I am on ISO 1250, and obviously I may have to do some corrections in post to bring it up a little bit. Got my light over here on the side. Now, if you're going for a very like landscape architectural and you want everything to be super sharp, I definitely recommend hanging around T4, T5, 6 or higher um, because then that is going to give you edge to edge full sharpness at 2.6 all the way up to around that four area. Uh, it does start to get a little bit soft. You can see in some of these examples on the side. So just be weary of that. So as long as you have a decent amount of light and you can stop down a little bit, um, then you're gonna be a-okay. And this thing really is, again, low distortion and really sharp all the way around. I just want to interrupt myself real quick and clarify something about the focus. So right now I'm actually filming at T2.6, uh, so it's as wide open as it gets and everything looks fine. Of course the edges are softer because that's the type of shot I'm going for. And other type of macro shots or close-up shots like you see here, it makes sense to go more wide open, that way you get these softer edges. So it's not a bad thing that this wide angle gets soft on the edges at T2.6. Just a lot of people, especially as they get in lower light situations, the first thing they go for is uh, you know, opening up that aperture. And if you're trying to do landscapes or anything where you want your extra wide field of view to look sharp edge to edge, you wanna make sure that you're at least uh, T4 and uh, higher, closed down however you wanna word it. So there you guys have it. That is all about the Irix 15 millimeter cine lens. Uh, I really love this wide angle. It's a nice addition to the lineup. So of course, everything will be linked in the description below. And let me know what you wanna see with the 150 macro in a couple weeks. See you guys in the next one.